I was honestly about to walk out of the door to go get some stuff done today. And lo and behold, that's when Stern drops this. Now, as per usual, um, IGN has got the exclusive on this. So if you want to go to their website and watch it via their website, then you're going to be bombarded with advertisements. It is just ridiculous. So I'm glad that Stern at least puts this stuff up on YouTube as well because IGN is a cesspool for advertisements. I'm sorry, but I'm just not a big fan of ads. That's why I pay for YouTube Premium. That's why I pay for all the different things. That Whatever gets rid of advertising, that's what I go for. That's just me. But anyways, let's get into this. So in case you have not already seen this video, I will, of course, as usual on this channel, I will play the video in its entirety, and then we can go through it segment by segment to try to dissect what we see. Let's go. And action! written all over it. Alright. So, let's start from the beginning. And I've written down a couple of notes just on the very beginning of me watching this the first time. And uh, let's get the show on the road. First off, the first thing I want to bring up and recognize is the music. Um, I'm liking this. I'm, I'm really enjoying the music for this game so far. It's got a nice, you know, good... Halloween theme Elvira tone to it. It's got a good beat. So uh that's got my that's got my attention so far. And action. My next note is I wonder if anybody else notices the call out voice right there. That is very it and it may be the same voice actor, but whenever I hear that it sounds really reminiscent to what you hear on like Attack from Mars and a number of other games. That particular individual, I don't know, when I heard that, I thought of Attack from Mars and stuff like that, or Revenge from Mars. Uh, that's immediately what struck me, so I'm kind of hoping that we get some more of his voice throughout the game. So when it comes to the Translite and the LCD. We don't get much on the LCD, on this video at least. So it looks like he's playing the premium version when it comes to the artwork. There's been all kinds of speculation and people have been putting stuff on pen side and I'm telling you guys a lot of that stuff is just complete utter hearsay and not true. Um, there was one individual that posted a slew of things uh, and even one of that was confirming my original theory that there's a possibility of the Vuck launching into the trunk. And trust me, I didn't want to think it was going to be possible, but it was going to be a cool thing to see if it was true. But once that was in the dialogue of what was going to be on the game, that's when I immediately called BS. I was like, I don't think this is true, any of this stuff. So when it comes to what we see on the back glass, it looks like it's just an image uh, I don't see any type of rotating hand, which has been some assumptions, but this is the premium model, so maybe the upper tiers have something. I don't know. Uh, it looks like we've just got a still image of Elvira on the back glass, or the uh, LCD. So, my... Uh, 
my thought also, and what a lot of other people have noticed also, this is how the trunk is going to open up. It's not going to be a ball lock, it looks like, to where it would hold multiple balls to launch out or anything like that. It looks like that it goes up, catches the ball, and immediately launches it back out. Now, I can't recall if they show where it pops out to, though. So it launches out where I thought it did, right underneath the... the but it doesn't show us where to it launches to into. Uh, my guess, and by trajectory, is correct. Then I'm thinking it launches into the pops, which are behind the right ramp. Now, I can't recall if they also show off the pop bumpers or not in this video. I, I've already forgotten. So I'm noticing the light show on the house is pretty cool. The way they've got the light set up and how it's going to be real flashy right there to draw your attention to the house. So that seems pretty cool. So this is pretty cool also. I like this. It's very simple and mechanical. Just you hit it, launches the gargoyles up. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I like that. So this deadhead family crypt turns out to be where the subway is going to be located that feeds the Vuck. My original assumption was that it was going to be fed from the basement underneath the house. This one obviously, mechanically, physically, and financially makes more sense to put the subway right here because it would be just, it's a lot simpler than having to weave a subway underneath a, a good portion of the play field to get to that Vuck. So, uh, this Rolodex, what looks like to me, because I'm thinking I'm seeing multiple different things that can roll up and reveal and give you different abilities. So that kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Party Monsters, the first game. So, so yeah, it does feed the Vuck. Let me go back there for a second. You can see that when it fires that Vuck, it shakes that plastic piece on there. It's got some, yeah, you can see that ramp moving too. So, take note of that, guys. Um, so, that one actually says the Crypt Kicker. Okay, yeah. So, I'm not being picky here, guys. I'm trying not to be. I'm not saying, oh, look at the, the, the ramp moves or whatever. But, chances are, if they would have gone with some wire forms, then, I don't know. That's, that's so far, what I can see right now, the only thing that I don't care about this machine is that they went with plastic ramps instead of wire forms that's all i've got right now so yes the coffin the, the coffin targets do get hit from the vuck which has been a lot of speculatory and let's see where that ball hits let me go back does it hit on the play field first does it even show okay it looks like it hits right there dead center of the play field so that's where we're gonna see indentions and stuff like that dimpling and hopefully not cracking or anything and it hits the targets so you can see it that this rolodex goes to different things they got a current bash toy right there so the drop target goes down goes underneath the, into the basement Kind of curious to see what kind of art is behind that drop target. That looks interesting. I, I mean, there's, I guarantee you that's got to be an Easter egg. I don't know what it is. UL Viber fans probably immediately know where that's from, whether it be one of the old movies um, or something. But you got an Easter egg more than likely right there. So underneath the house, and then it feeds out to the left orbit. Rotating top of the house. This was something that was mentioned on Pinside that actually is true. This uh, rotates around and it's going to be probably a mode based turning around thing. We got an eyeball, a bug, a bat, and Elvira. And so here's something I'm curious about if this is the way it's supposed to be. I'm curious, I don't know, I don't know if I like that. I mean, I, I like the fact that the ramp does go up. 
But due to the fact that you have the gargoyle's wing sticking out like that, then that means that the gargoyle's wing goes up, or the gargoyle himself goes up. So whenever you hit the... Uh, So you can see right now, the gargoyle is already up due to the fact that the ramp is up. Just on the right side too, I guess the, it's angled enough to where it doesn't affect the gargoyle on the left. So basically that means that whenever you know the gargoyle is up because of the ramp, whenever you hit that particular target, you're not going to get the visual of the gargoyle going up. So I don't know. Part of me feels like maybe they should have like moved that over a little bit more or done some alterations to the wing right there so that doesn't happen, but it's it's whatever. Alright, let's move it on. That's got instant classic written all over it. And that is the only time we hear Cassandra's voice throughout this video of the game. And that's something that um, we you know we have to get a bunch of voice call outs for this game all right so once again stern you get your thumbs up from me currently the video only has like a hundred and some odd views uh with one thumbs down so that means right now it's got a 10 to 1 ratio <laughs> of likes to not likes all right so lo and behold we've actually got another video released by stern essentially at the same time showing off all the features as well as the video that we just saw so I have not seen this yet so let's watch it together for the first time here we go All right, so I'm not. I mean, I'm gonna stop this, guys. I'm, I'm here and there to, to catch things already. So let's back up if we can right here, real quick, because I noticed something. Because we still have not seen the pop bumpers, guys. We have not seen that. And if you look up here, you can see the action that there's got to be pop bumpers behind this right ramp. Because you can see stuff bouncing around, including where the gargoyle bounces up. So that's got to be where the pop pumps are at, even though we have not actually seen them yet. There they are! Oh, yeah, so it does feed out the back of the house into the bumpers like I assumed it would. Another thing that someone posted was that the house feeds the ramps, and I'm like, how is that possible? So, no, it comes out the back of the house and feeds into the pop bumpers like I assumed it would. So it looks like if you launch into the cell or underneath the stairs that it ejects it back out to you.
All right, so I'm glad they showed off more features. And once again, it's just a premium. And it answers a little bit more questions and a little, little bit less for discussion, so I like that as well. And um, so the diverter underneath the house looks like it has the option to either eject the ball out to you or feed the left door. But at first I thought it was feeding that left ramp, and I was like, how? Where? I don't recall seeing where the hell that was at. So anyways, so let's start off by speculating on price. All right, so I'm on the cesspool IGN website right now, and my ad blocker is going friggin' crazy right now. So the looks like that a lot of the features that are going to be in this game, and the basically the scared stiff style crate that opens up to divert balls into a multi ball lock. So chances are that that crate will not immediately shoot out the ball whenever it gets it it could hold it there for a multi-ball yep no lower pro there's no pro model like in like basically everyone's been stating it's not one of stern's cornerstones that's what we've heard too the le's and the signature editions feature a mirrored back glass shaker motor art blades that spruce up the sides of the inner cabinet and anti-reflection glass the Signature Edition adds special hyperchrome embossed cabinet decals, an Elvira signed card, a signed certificate that includes a swatch of fabric from Elvira's iconic red velvet sofa. There are 400 LEs and only 50 Signature Editions. So then it lists off the large amount of films that uh, Elvira had on her show or whatever but it's all on there here we go premium elvira house of horrors is an msrp of eight thousand dollars limited edition at ninety six hundred <laughs> and <laughs> there is no price listed for the sle <laughs> just an intimidating call for price Oh, but I'll tell you right now, it's 15000 So, there you go. It, it's, it's, it, that's, that's your prices on that. 8000 which is more than you'll spend for a current Cornerstone Stern Premium. And the limited edition for $9,600. Oh, man. So, here's the thing, guys, is that... I'm not an Elvira fan, not that I don't enjoy playing her games, but I'm not a fan to which I'm going to strive to add this game to my collection. Elvira's Cleavage was probably close to my first love as a child growing up. Um, it was one of those where I could not help, even though I didn't really know what I was really looking at. All I know is that I could not help but stare at her area that everyone seems to stare at. But aside from it being Cassandra and Elvira, this is going to be a game that I believe it's going to sell. And I think primarily the reason why it's going to sell is due to the theme. And that's disappointing. Because of the price that they're wanting to charge for this game. Yes, this game has got a good amount of things to it that are inter going to be entertaining and people are going to enjoy. Do I feel that just, I say just, but getting the premium base model for this title is worth the $8,000 price tag? Hell no. Nor do I believe it's worth $9,600, let alone a $15,000 price tag for a signature limited edition. And that's what's upsetting, guys, is that even though Stern has set these price points, they're probably going to sell. And that's upsetting because if they keep selling at this price, then they will continue to sell and start their games at this price. If we keep buying, then they're going to keep selling like that. We are giving them no incentive to change their pricing on this. If you keep buying at these bloated pricings then they're gonna just keep going 
But it's Elvira. It's gonna sell. It's gonna sell. And... It is what it is. But that's pretty much my only complaint on the game. It's not... I don't have a problem with the look. I don't have a problem with the music. The, the game looks like it would be pretty damn fun to play. I just don't agree with what they're wanting to charge for it. What's curious to me is that given all the issues that have recently come up with their play fields and their clear coding issues, are those of you out there still willing to drop that minimum $8,000 price tag for a game that's probably going to have the same issues as that we're already seeing on Jurassic Parks? Can you tell me that you don't think that these play fields have already been clear coded around the same time as Jurassic Park and that we're no longer going to have that issue? If you've got the 15k to drop on an SLE, bravo. Applaud to you and if you want to, go right ahead. It's your money. I don't care. Me personally, as well as those of us out here that I also know even had pre-orders for this game have backed away and they're not purchasing until they know for sure that the playfield issues with clear coding has been resolved and i hope they have I, I mean i want nothing but the best from these pinball manufacturers i don't want any of them to have any kind of mark on their records for defects that deal with a matter like this but like i stated earlier my pretty much only issue with this game is the pricing and if I really want to be nitpicky the plastics above the outlanes and that depends on if I'm able to see the ball when it's basically going between the outlanes I don't like not being able to see my outlane so that way I know which direction I need to nudge and if you obscure my visual of the outlanes and that's going to hinder my ability to play this game better so I'm going to wrap this video up. Chances are by the end of, the end of today, I will be putting out another video with further information that details that are bound to be coming my way, guys. But seriously, this is within the hour of Stern posting this online for all of us to view. So this is just my first opinions, speculations, as well as facts that have been given to us for your viewing pleasure. So what are you thinking about Elvira's House of Horrors so far? Any downsides? good sides upsides or whatever let me know down below what you think if you haven't already be sure to hit that subscribe button down below that way you can be notified of whenever i upload something for your viewing pleasure until next time guys peace out